Brothers and sisters, friends, blessed morning, peace of the Lord be with you. I am Reverend Gary Yeo, the Associate Pastor of the Klang Chinese Methodist Church. On behalf of the Church, I welcome you to our English Worship online service every Sunday at 10.30 a.m. in the morning. For those who are new to Klang CMC, let me say it in three words. We are a church about faith, life and missions. Our hope and aim is to train believers to exercise and live out their faith in their daily lifestyle and to obey Jesus Christ's great commission to make disciples of all nations, proclaiming his gospel, and to obey Christ's great commandment to love God and to love people created in his image as ourselves. Let us at this time quieten ourselves and prepare our hearts to worship as the pianist plays the prelude. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. May I invite congregation to be upstanding as we sing the opening hymn, number 40, And Can It Be That I Should Gain. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Saviour's blood Died He for me, who caused His pain For me, who Him to death pursued Amazing love, how can it be That Thou, my God, should die for me Amazing love, how can it be That thou, my God, should die for me? He left his Father's throne above So free, so infinite his grace Emptied himself of all but love and bled for Adam's helpless race. This mercy all immense and free, for O oh my God, it found out me. This mercy all immense and free, for O oh my God, it found out me. Long my imprisoned spirit lay Fast bound in sin and nature's night 
Thine eye diffuse a quickening ray I woke the dungeon flamed with light My chains fell off, my heart was free I rose, went forth and follow thee My chains fell off, my heart was free I rose, went forth and followed thee No condemnation now I dread I am my Lord's and He is mine A life in Him my living head And clothed in righteousness divine Bull I approach the eternal throne And claim the crown through Christ my own Amazing love, how can it be That thou my God should die for me? Brothers and sisters, as we remain standing, let us go to the Lord in prayer. O Lord our God, indeed, what a beautiful hymn to remind us of how amazing is your love for us. How can it be that thou, my God, should die for unworthy sinners such as us? Yet, Lord Jesus, you left your Father's throne above. You emptied yourself of all but love. So free, so infinite is your grace that you bled and died for helpless human race. And now there's no more condemnation that I dread. I'm yours and you are mine. Alive in you, my living hate, and clothed in righteousness divine. I look to the day when I boldly approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. What a great Saviour we, save, we serve, Lord. Lord, you not just save us, but you also sustain us even through this current pandemic time. We thank you for your hands of protection upon us, our family, our churches, and our land of Malaysia. From the time when MCO lockdown started on 18 March to the conditional MCO, and now to the recovery stage of MCO. Lord, we pray, even as many people are now back to work, to schools, to shopping malls, restaurants, churches, and so on, that in your mercy, you spare us from the second wave of the coronavirus from recurring again. Lord, we pray especially for the vulnerable groups like the elderly and children, that you also spare them from this virus. For those who have lost their jobs, may you provide for them and grant them your favour to find a suitable job soon. Lord, indeed, this pandemic has caused much pain and heartaches to people and it has affected many people, not just physically, but emotionally, mentally, and socially as well. Oh Lord, may this time of pandemic, may we not be drifting to isolation and depression. Oh Lord, may you hear the cries and the pleas of your people. Oh Lord, that you come, you come and rescue us. Indeed, we are fighting against this invisible enemy, but yet, Nothing is impossible for you, O oh God. We look to you by faith that you help us to overcome. Lord, we pray for our church, KCMC, and many other churches as well that plan to open up their sanctuary for worship services soon. That you will grant the leaders and the pastors wisdom and unity in all the preparation work that is needed. We pray that, churches, that church members will all observe the SOPs and practice social distancing and proper hygiene. Lord, we want to pray also for our young people who are still in schools or colleges, that they will not be disheartened and anxious over the delay of their exams. Oh Lord, may they, may they able to manage their time well and be disciplined and, and maintain their diligence in their studies. Grant them your peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, we want to continue to pray for our beloved nation of Malaysia as well. We thank you for the good works done by the government, especially the, the Ministry of Health 
and also the police, the armed forces in the past three months. Oh Lord, may they continue to be vigilant in keeping tap of this pandemic to be under control. We pray for a recovery of our economy as well, so that the livelihood of the people can be restored. And at the social front, Lord, we pray for greater racial harmony, mutual understanding and respect among people of different races or religion. Lord, we continue to pray for greater freedom of worship and belief for all people. Oh Lord, you know the, situ the situation of our nation right now. Lord, we pray and plead to you for political stability and for justice and righteousness to be restored in our land. Lord, we thank you that we can still worship you so freely this morning at times like this. Lord, indeed this morning we are privileged to hear your word once again spoken through your servant, Pastor Tan Sing Guan. Lord, may you use him to be your mouthpiece to deliver your word to us and help us to respond in obedience. Thank you for hearing our prayer. We pray all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Please be seated. This morning's scripture reading is taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. And verse 13, Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. This is the word of the Lord. Our preacher for today is Pastor Dr. Tan Sing Guan, my fellow co-worker. Pastor Tan, I believe, is no stranger to many of us Clang CMC members. So without much further ado, I shall now invite Pastor Tan to the pulpit. Over to you, Pastor Tan. Thank you, Reverend Gary. Good morning. Many years ago, Yibit and I were in Cambodia for a short-term mission assignment. In the midst of our busyness, the locals brought us to a museum. They call it a genocide museum. And as Yibit and I, we entered into the compound. Something looks like a school, and there were a lot of classrooms as well. As we stepped into the first classroom, we were greeted by pictures of men and women. We were greeted by their eyes gazing at us, but their eyes were filled with hopelessness, like they were crying, help us. These were the people who were murdered by the Khmer Rouge many, many years back. As the local tour guide brought us from one room to another room, the tour guide explained to us how the Khmer Rouge regime tortured their own people, the young and old, the babies. The tour guide explained to us 
describe to us how the regime will just smash an infant against the tree. How they use the tools, the tools that to torture the women. And as the tour guide showed me and showed even and I the tools which they used to torture the people, I could just imagine their cry. I could imagine their pain. I could imagine their helplessness. They were like just crying and, and screaming, wanting to just die at that moment. But it could not. You know what? The dictionary described inhumane as lacking human qualities of compassion and mercy, cruel and barbaric. It just took me that visit to realize how inadequate, how shortcoming is the definition given by the dictionary. I just could not imagine the extent of cruelty the cap- the, the, that the man is capable of doing against their own fellow human beings. I think this is understandable because even the scripture says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick who can understand it. For many nights after that visit, Whenever I close my eyes, the lifeless gaze of the people just seep into my imaginations. It was an unforgettable experience. My friends, my brothers and sisters, indeed it is true. The heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? But you know what, my friends? As we learned in our first sessions, you and I were not created to be like that. In fact, we were created to, to really reflect the image of God. We are the bearer of the image of God. We have learned in our previous sessions that God has given us the authority to be the stewards of the whole creation, to be the stewards of the family given to us, to be the stewards of the Garden of Eden given to, given to us, the creation given to us. And we, we need to manage it well for His glory. We, will also, we also learned in the previous sessions that God had given us the capacity, the ability to build community of love. That we are able to express love to each other. We are able to receive love from each other. That we will be able to express our love to God and, and, and we will be able to receive love from God. And we will be able to, to, to create a culture of love, a community of love. And God has so enabled us the ability to do what is good. When God created Eden, it was perfect but it was incomplete because God intended for us to, to, to work on the Garden of Eden and to spread the Garden of Eden so that the glory of God cover the earth as uh, the glory of God cover the earth as the water cover the sea. You and I were created to be the bearer of the image of God. To build love relationship, to be the good stewards of what He has given to us, to all the resources He has given to us, and to do all that we can to propagate goodness. But we all know that uh, something happened. Adam and Eve decided to turn away from God, and sin entered into this world. Adam and Eve, as the uh, head of the creation, actually. Because they have decided to turn against from to turn away from God, sin has not only entered into their lives, sin has also entered into creation. I just want to show with you this picture. That when God created us, He created us to be one who is able to manage, to be a good steward of resources given to us. When God created us, He created us to be people who is able, who are able to build love to raise a culture of love, a community of love, and to be people who is able to do good, to propagate all that is good. But because sin entered into this world, our relationship with God has been alienated. Now, instead of being a good steward, instead of being a steward of what God has given to us, we have now take, took ownership of the creations. We manage the resources, we manage everything that God has given to us as if it is our own, as these people who will not be giving any account, not accountable to anyone. 
And instead of building a love relationship, we build the relationship, love relationship based on insecurities, based on self-centeredness. And instead of doing what is good, propagate what is good, we define good based on our own selfishness. We define what is good, not according to what God wants. I'd like to show you a few passages. It talks about the broken relationship with God. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked so I hid myself. I could imagine, when I read this passage, I could imagine that God has this routine with Adam and Eve. He will visit them and they will talk and they will discuss about what they have done and God will give them suggestion, okay, what can you do after this, you know. There was actually a, a good fellowship between them and now you could see you could clearly see that this beautiful, this once beautiful and intimate relationship has degenerated to shame. They were now afraid to meet God. Has degenerated to alienation. Right now, they hid themselves from God. Man, the relationship between man and God has been broken. As a result, as I just said just now, we have now taken ownership of the whole creation. We decide what is good. We decide what we want to do. We don't have to give any accountable, any account to God. That was, and that is the kind of attitude that we are carrying right now. We talk about the re broken relationship between each other, between man and man. Passage in Genesis chapter 3, 11, 13 says this, And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to, me, to be with me, she gave me from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? And the woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate it. Could, could you just imagine what I've just read just now? Adam and Eve, they, they used to love each other. They were very intimate. But right now, you so, could, could you notice what happened? In order to defend himself, Adam began to blame if the whole relationship right now has split into selfishness and as you as you could see today this self-centeredness defensiveness selfishness is is a norm in a husband and wife relationship in a family relationship in communities in the marketplaces even in among the countries do you have I mean, do we, have the, do we still have the capacity to love? Yes, we still do. But our love is right now tainted with selfishness, tainted with um, self-defense, tainted with insecurities. Have you heard of loving couples many years back, but right now they are separated? Have you heard of stories of seeing people, siblings, they are fighting each other for a reason they could justify. Have you seen fittings? Have you seen or have you experienced a situation where you were betrayed or backstabbed by your own friends, your business partner, your colleagues, perhaps even your bosses? My brothers and sisters, Love right now, when we are supposed to be a community of love, culture of love, even though we still have the capacity to love, but it is now tainted with selfishness and insecurity. As a result, Adam and Eve, the way they define what is good has been tainted as well. They began to impose their own want and needs over what God sought redefining the meaning of goodness and they, and they will do anything or everything yes they will still expand they will still do a lot of things but goodness right now is based on their own definition it's no longer based on the definitions by god let me give you these pictures what is good defund the police is good is riot good 
is protest good? Is standing for their right good? How do you define good right now? How about this, the homeless people? How do you define good? To feed them? To house them? To let them stay like that, that way? What is good? Who define good? Yes, this is not the complete picture, of course. As we will see in our next session, we will see how, you know, Jesus Christ actually died on the cross for our sin. In fact, this scripture says, He Himself bore our sins. He Himself bore our sins in His body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By His wounds you have been healed, for you were, stra- for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseas. The, the, and overseers of your soul. We are Christian right now. We know right now what Christ has done on the cross for our sins. Through His death, we are now reconciled back to God. And through His death, we are now, our, our communication with God is now being re-established. We can now talk to God. We can now discuss with God. We can now sought, seek for His decision and seek for His direction. And right now, we also have the Holy Spirit We have the Word of God. We have the Holy Spirit to empower us, to guide us, to help us to do what is right. For instance, in Romans 8, 28 to 29, the Scripture says this, And we know that those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose, for those whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, in order that He might be the firstborn among many brothers. We have just discussed that because of sin, we have lost. We have actually, our image has been marked. The image of God has been marked. But right now, because right now we are in Christ, God is working in our life in such a way that we are right now conforming to the image of His Son. God is renewing us day by day through circumstances, through His Word, through our daily experiences so that we will become more and more like Jesus Christ. So this is, this is the good news, which we're going to discuss, talk about it in the next session. But you may say, Pastor, I disagree. Because I also see Christians backstab each other. I also see that Christians divorce each other. I also see that Christians fight for their property, for properties. It is true, my, father, my, my friends. That once we receive Jesus Christ, it does not mean we will become perfect immediately. Yes, the Bible says we are new creations, but the scripture also says we are in the process of becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. As we are in the process of becoming more and more like Jesus Christ, there will be always a, there will always be tensions that what God wants us to do and what Satan wants us to do. For these reasons, I would like to just devote the remaining of these sessions to just revisit the temptation of Eve and Adam, or Adam and Eve. What happened? So that we are able to understand the strategy of Satan. And as the more we understand the intention of Satan, the more we be more ca- be careful, and the more we will know how to respond to it based on the will of God. Let's look at this passage, chapter 3, verse 1. And he said to the woman, Indeed, Has God said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? Indeed, has God said? My friends, Satan's first questions put Eve in a position to reconsider God's command. Satan's first strategy is to always put us in a situation to reconsider God's command or to cast doubts on God's command. Now, Satan did not deny God's command. He just put us in a situation where we will reconsider His commands. In our modern language, it's like, sure or not, did God say that? Ah? How, how do you know? Ah? Or, or, you know, the, uh, does God actually mean that? Can you believe or not? 
So Satan's first strategy is to challenge us to reconsider God's commands and tells us that you and I must take up the responsibility to challenge the Word of God, to reconsider the Word of God. Or he may say that you and I have the capacity, has the power to evaluate every single word of God. And this is something that you and I may be facing each day, daily choices that we have. As you listen to the sermons, as you listen to, you know, in these discipleship classes, the Lord may have impressed upon your heart many things. And perhaps the first thing that comes to our mind is true. Can we explain differently? Or is there another explanation? Recently, I have a friend uh, who was uh, promoted last year to become a CEO. And uh, unfortunately, after a few months, he took up the office. The COVID-19 issue came in. Huh? So uh, his company made a lot of losses. So he texts us almost, almost uh, two or three times a week, asking us to pray for him. And because he has decided, even in the midst of these situations, he wants to glorify God. He recognized that he is the bearer of the image of God. And as a CEO of the company, he wants to demonstrate God. He wants to bring this culture of love. He wants to bring this culture of accountability, of stewardship, doing the best into the company. But he was placed in a very difficult situation. Now, the whole process had been very, very tough. He could always choose to say, uh, he could always decide. Uh, he could always. He, he can just decide anything that he wants. He's a CEO. But he said, "I want to. I want my every decisions honor God. If God wants me to be a good steward, I want to be the good steward. If God wants me to be a culture, to be a culture of love, I want to build this culture of love." He can always say, "Wait, this is businessman. There's no time to talk about culture of love. Now it's about <laughs> profit and loss things." But he did not. He is not out of the wood yet, but one thing's for sure, because uh, we have been following, we have followed up with him almost every week. I could sense, I mean, we could sense from his WhatsApp that this man is, is becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. He is becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. While Satan may put us in a situation where we will need to, recon that to, to, to uh, reconsider the Word of God, the second thing Satan may do and will usually do is this, to downplay the seriousness of God's Word. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. You surely will not die. As I said just now, second question, the second thing Satan will do is to downplay the seriousness of God's word. Now, Satan again does not attempt to deny the word of God. Satan just needs to put us in a position where we devalue or we give lesser importance of the word of God in our mind or in our lives. Satan just needs to bring up a lot of information around us. And so, this information around us forces us to devalue the importance or even to devalue the seriousness of God's words in our lives. Um, there was one the father, once a father who has been spending a lot of time in building his own career to the extent that they, that trouble started to brew and chaos, chaos started to brew in his family. And his relationship with his teenagers, you know, teenage boy, it came to a point that uh, became very, very serious. Uh, they, they, were, they were having quite a lot of conflict. But this man realized that he needed to build the culture of love in his family. He needs to help his family to be, rec to, he needs to reconcile back to his family to build the culture of love. And he needs to also learn uh, to, to help the family to respond to God as well. Because in terms of spiritual life, the family is also, has also arrived at a point where it is not so encouraging. 
So this man decided to do something. He spent time, some time to consider his financial commitment, his financial situations. And he talked to his employers and finally took a bold step to put his career into a halt. He went back for several months. He rebuilt his relationship with his teenage boy. He rebuilt his relationship with his wife. He rebuilt his relationship with his family members. And God honours his decisions. Of course, God blessed his family life right now. This is a man who took the word of God seriously. He did not, he did not downplay the seriousness of God's words. God wants him to go back to rebuild his family and he did just that to the point that he sacrificed his own career. There are many things around us beside the word of God you have a lot of information. You have a lot of, we have a lot of things we, we, we can read. Where is the Word of God when it comes to its importance? Are we downplaying the seriousness of God's Word in our lives? The third thing Satan will do and usually do is to cast doubt on the character of God. The passage says here, for God knows that in the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. For God know. For God know you will be like God. Satan's third attack is no longer a question. Satan now suggests that God is withholding something better from Eve and of course from Adam by appealing or by implying that God does not have the best interest at heart, Satan gives us a reason to doubt God, to, to, to doubt whether God is good and to investigate it for ourselves. Several days ago, I, I was interested to find out what the young people are watching right now, uh, what kind of game they are playing right now. So I spent I really literally spent several hours to, uh, to browse through the internet and uh, some of the top 10 animations, top 10 video games, top 10 uh, 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 these animation uh, movies. You know what I found out? The themes, the prevailing themes. I was just taken aback. I was just so shocked. Be the warrior of darkness. Hates the angels. Rebels the authority. The authorities, you know, they have, not, they, they, they have no good intention. They just want to control. Authorities, authorities actually manipulate people. Who are the heroes? The rebels are the heroes. Kill and be merciless. And this, is, this last one just caught me. Let's kill God. These are, the, these are the movie, or these are the animations our young kids are watching and the games they are playing. When they grow up, if you tell them God is good, would they believe you? Now, throughout the conversation, it becomes clear that Satan's approach is to suppress the importance of God's word and allow us, human nature, to make decisions. We know that when we desire something, it is simple for us to come up with a lot of our reasons or excuses and why we should do this or should do that. You know, Satan just need to, Satan just need to, you know, to uh, sit back and then watch us to reason our ways into disobedience. Surely God will not kill us. Surely God will understand. Surely, you know, if I become like God, I will, I will gain something very, very special. Why not make choices for ourselves? Why must we trust God? The primary goal of temptation is, of course, to alienate us from God, to separate us from God.
and as we and if we are alienated from God all our decision making will be based on our self-centeredness and this self-centeredness will manifest itself in self-centered values it will manifest itself in self-centered behaviors and self-centered decision in life cutting us off from finding meaning and peace in our lives now this actually is the sins of Lucifer and his primary goal is actually cut us off from God so that we will be like him experience the same alienations and restlessness my brothers and sisters as a close I want us to remember this diagram we're talking about the primary goal of temptation is to alienation from God I want to show this diagram God has created you and I to reflect his image to be the good stewards of all the resources given to us, the people He has given to us, the finances given to us, the gifting that He has given to us, everything He has given to us, the friends He has given to us, that we will be a good steward of all these things, even the gospel that He has given to us. And to build a culture and a community of love at home, in the church, in the workplace, or even among our friends. And so that we will be able, we will learn and will be able to express love to each other and receive love from each other. And also learn to express love to God and receive love from God. We have also been asked, be created to do what is good and to do what is good based on God's definition, not based on our own definition. So that His glory will, will, will cover the earth as the sea, cover, as, as the water covers the sea. Are you a homemaker? Are you a father at home? Are you a business people? Are you a church leader? Are you a pastor? Are you a missionary? Are you a student? No matter who you are, God has entrusted all these things to you. Be the good steward. Build the culture of love. And propagate what is good. But then the question I'm going to ask you is this. Would you downplay these things? Would you downplay these things that we have just shared just now? Would you question, did God actually teach that? What would be your next steps? What would be your next steps? Let's pray. Father, we give thanks to you for the word of God. And we come before you, humbling ourselves, confessing our sins. For we recognize, God, that we have actually in many ways rebelled against you. We fail to be a good stewards of the resources given to us. In fact, we use it in such a way that like it, like we own it and we don't have to be accountable to anyone. Instead of building love relationships, we actually build a culture of selfishness, of, of defensiveness, of greed at home, in our communities, or even in our companies. Instead of doing what is good according to your own definitions, we do what is right according to our own eyes. Father, forgive us. And after receiving your words today, Lord, we desire to do something differently so that your glory will, be, will fill our home, your glory will fill our workplace, your glory will fill our life. And we ask, O oh God, that you will help us and lead us. Thank you for your word and thank you for the Holy Spirit. We know the Lord, as we come before you, you will lead and guide us accordingly. We come before you, submitting the next thing we're going to do unto your hand. God, lead us and guide us so that we, instead of manifesting the image of Lucifer, we will manifest the image of God. In Jesus Christ, name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tan, for the message to remind us once again the importance of us being created in the image of God. Now we shall have some announcement. As most of you already heard by now, the government's green light for places of worship to be opened. And as many people start to go out now, we must continue to pray 
for God to spare, continue to spare us from the second wave of virus recurring, from recurring again. So we really need to come together to pray even more so at this time. So as you can see, the first slide here is the announcement of a Saturday morning prayer. It's our weekly uh, prayer every Saturday morning from 7 to 8 a.m., which some of you uh, who are subscribed to our Connect broadcast group would have received every week. So I encourage you, if you haven't been subscribed into the Connect group, uh, do drop me a note to request for you to be added into the Connect broadcast group so that you can be in touch of uh, church latest news. So I encourage you, one of them is to participate in the prayer meeting every Saturday morning. All right, we really need to pray all the more at this time and pray for, the, for wisdom upon our church leaders uh, as they make important decisions, the preparations as well as to open up our premise for uh, worship services. All right, so the other thing, just uh, mention, make, mention again, the family altar besides prayer uh, uh, initiative that we do, we encourage families to come together to pray at least once a week. We send out very good materials for family to go through as their family devotion time. So family altar is one of them that you will receive every Monday if you're on the Connect broadcast group of KCMC. So once again, I just want to mention here, especially in this trying time, um, if you're feeling anxious, worried, or afraid, uh, feel free to call me, Reverend Gary Yeo. Right? My contact number is as uh, shown on the slide. And, and for those who want to be included in the Connect broadcast group, please feel free to drop me a note and I shall add you in. And one last personal note, uh, as I shared last week, my daily devotion and encouragement in the Facebook. If you go to your Facebook, just search for Reverend Gary Yeo's daily devotion and encouragement. You can read my daily devotion every day. Uh, I go through book by book, chapter by chapter. And I hope that is the least I can do as a pastor to benefit the congregation with the Word of God at this difficult time. So that's about my announcement for this morning. Thank you. Now is offering time. I encourage you to give your offering through online banking into our KCMC bank account as shown on the screen. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And verse 8 says, God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. So friends, brothers and sisters, let us give general, willingly and cheerfully, even for this morning offering. Let us be upstanding as we sing the closing hymn.
Brothers and sisters, let us receive the benediction. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power and work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.